In this era, there is a feeling that things are getting worse and this is reflected in how people think and act. There is a trend to resist trying new things, not just in art but in other areas too. For example, some people are promoting realism in art as a way to express themselves differently. Others are treating art movements like trans avant-gardism as products to sell. Architects claiming to be influenced by postmodernism are moving away from the Bauhaus style and focusing more on make, making buildings practical rather than experiential. Some people are unhappy with the way certain influential works like A Thousand Plateaus by Deleuze and Guattari are written. They say these works lack clarity, especially when discussing complex ideas. Something that avant-garde writers and thinkers from the 1960s and 1970s are making it hard to understand important concepts. They suggest the usage of language that is easier to understand, like what historians use. There is also criticism of continental philosophy for not being connected to real life. Some say it should focus more on how things are in reality. Postmodernism's approach is considered by many as playful and not helpful, especially when there are serious issues like authoritarianism and the threat of nuclear war. Some defend modernity against neoconservatives who want to get rid of ideas from the Enlightenment period by saying they are outdated. They argue that modern life has become fragmented because different parts of society are controlled by different experts. This fragmentation makes people feel disconnected, similar to how the poet Bardilia felt over a hundred years ago. To address this disconnection, Habermas suggests rethinking how we experience art. Instead of just focusing on what we like, we should consider the historical context and, and think about big questions about life. This broader perspective connects art with how we think and what we believe is right or wrong. Habermas believes this can help bring together different areas of thought like how we understand things, how we decide what is right and how we organize society. He wants to create a more unified experience. However, it is not clear exactly what this unity would look like. Does Habermas mean everything in society should fit together perfectly like parts of a machine? Or is he talking about integrating different ways of thinking like understanding morals and politics into one larger framework? And if it is the latter, can this really work? Habermas's idea is influenced by the philosopher Hegel who believed everything in society should fit together perfectly. Others compare it to Kant who argued that we should carefully consider different perspectives before making judgments. They think Habermas's idea needs to be looked at closely, especially because some people do not agree with the Enlightenment's belief in one perfect way of doing things. Critics like Wittgenstein and Adorno suggest that we should not try to force everything together seamlessly. They consider that we should think carefully about different perspectives even if they are not what Habermas had in mind. The demands in the art world are not all the same. Some conflict with each other. Some people want art to reflect objective reality, while others prefer subjective expression. Despite these differences, there is a common desire for order, unity, ident identity and popularity among artists. They are encouraged to reconnect with society and even help heal it if needed. Many people feel it is urgent to move away from the avant-garde style. Instead of rejecting it outright, some suggest blending it with other styles to, cre to create something new. They believe this approach is better than sticking to old-fashioned ways, especially since capitalism is changing how we see things. In today's world, ratings and trying new things are often more important than traditional experiences. Photography cinema did not threaten painting and literature. They completed them. 
they made it easier for people to understand and relate to images and stories however this can lead to a superficial understanding of reality artists and writers must avoid being used for super superficial purposes and question old rules that might hold them back some artists stick to traditional rules and find success by pleasing the majority others challenge these rules but risk losing their audience's trust the clash between these approaches is seen in the avant-garde movement which challenged traditional art but also risked losing its meaning realism in art often avoids questioning reality and can sometimes be seen as boring or tacky when those in power support a certain ideology they might prefer realistic or neoclassical art over experimental styles they might even ban experimental art if it does not fit their views this happens when images and stories in art match what the ruling party wants and what the public seeks for comfort when governments crack artistic experimentation it usually means they want art to follow strict beauty rules they don't let art explore new ideas or find its own audience instead they decide what is beautiful and what is not without considering different perspectives in capitalist societies a mix of different cultural styles becomes normal this leads to confusion about what is good or bad in art and everything becomes about making money if art can sell it is considered valuable no matter if it is truly good or not artists and writers writers often feel pressure to create work that is easy to understand and appeals to a broad audience this focus on making art profitable undermines creativity and encourages following popular trends science and industry also face doubts about what is real technology often determines what is considered true or important rather than traditional beliefs this shift has big implications for how we understand reality and how society functions this idea of questioning reality is not just about history it is also about bigger philosophical concepts like nihilism and sublime the sublime is a mix of pleasure and pain when faced with something too big or complex to understand it challenges our ideas of beauty and pushes us to think beyond what we know in modern art artists try to show things that are hard art to see or understand they use techniques like making things look formless or abstract this idea is based on kant's theory of the sublime which says that art can make us feel awe by showing us things we cannot fully grasp artists often make artworks that challenge viewers and might even make them uncomfortable the avant-garde artists a group of innovative painters follow these ideas they use visible images to hint at things we cannot fully understand they believe in kant's idea that reality and concepts don't always always match up so they create art that challenges how we see the world these artists often question traditional art techniques like drawing and color mixing to show how art can manipulate our perceptions they want to expose the tricks that art uses to make us see things in a certain way thinkers like habermas see this as a way to break away from reality similar to freud's idea of sublimation but their ideas about aesthetics or what makes art beautiful might be different postmodernism is a part of modern art that questions the rules of making images and telling stories it challenges what was accepted just yesterday and pushes us to think differently about art artists like picasso and dacamp challenged preached previous ideas about art and made way for new ways of thinking there are two main ways of thinking within modern art one focuses on the feeling of loss and longing for what is real while the other celebrates the power of imagination and invention these two often mix together in art showing a tension between sadness and experimentation to simplify imagine modern art as a chessboard 
On one side are artists who express sadness and longing, like the German Expressionists. On the other side are artists like Breck and Picasso, who push boundaries and experiment with new ideas. Both ways of thinking are important in shaping the direction of art. In the works of Prost and Joyce, they hinted things that cannot be fully shown. This hinting called illusion is crucial for expressing the sublime in their art. In Prost's writing, he suggests that the core of consciousness is hard to pin down because time changes it so much. But in Joyce's writing, the problem lies in the nature of writing itself, which gets overwhelmed by the vastness of books and literature. Prost mainly uses conventional language and storytelling techniques to suggest the unpresentable. He changes the way novels are usually written by focusing on inner thoughts and challenging typical story structures, but his writing stays consistent like in Hegel's ideas. On the other hand, Joyce embraces chaos, chaos in his writing. He tries many different styles and techniques, not worrying about making everything fit together neatly. He sees traditional language rules as limitations that stop him from expressing the unpresentable fully. The main difference here is that modern aesthetics, that of Prost, presents the unpresentable as something missing within a recognizable form, giving comfort to readers. But postmodernism, like Joyce's approach, presents the unpresentable directly within the art itself. Postmodern artists break away from traditional forms and rules to convey a strong, to convey a strong sense of the unpresentable, even if it is uncomfortable. Postmodernism can be seen in essays like Mondain's where there is freedom to explore different ideas without needing to follow strict rules. Modernism, on the other hand, is seen in fragmented works like the where there is a more structured approach to art. Our job as artists is not to show reality but to suggest things that cannot be shown directly. This does not mean we will ever fully reconcile different ways of thinking as Kant and Hegel realized, but we can embrace the idea of not, not needing total unity instead focusing on embracing differences and acknowledging the limits of what we can know.